you're listening to Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong, all on Georgia Radio Network. Welcome to episode 95 of the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. I'm Dave Roberts. With me is my co-host, partner in podcast crime, writer, journalist, all-around good egg, blonde bombshell, Jessica Salagi. Good egg. Good egg. How oh. old are you, Dave? Yeah, I was about to say, when did when did, when did did that come back? <laughs> when did that come back? That's like, you know, Wonder Years level. Oh, it was before that. Well, 1950s. Well, the Wonder Years was supposed to be like back in time. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't pay that much attention to it. How, of course not, because you were week? already old and working. Yeah, I was already working. <laughs> three pack a day cigarette habit. <laughs> Wasn't that all in the eighties? I don't know. I watched it on Nick at Night in the nineties. <laughs> Nick at Night. So it was already <laughs> old by the time you were. A kid. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm sixty four years old. Oh well. You don't look a day over 60. Thank you. I'm, thank you. I'm 10 years your senior. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Uh-huh. How was your week? It was good. I finally put up my Christmas decorations. And um, I have this Santa, like, you know, they're not, it's not like life-size Santa or anything, but it's the ones, they're probably like a foot or a foot and a half tall. You put them on a table or you know, something like tabletop size. And it's a patriotic Santa that someone gifted to me several years ago. And he has a little Liberty drum and a flag. And um, he has some, like, I guess, people in history in his little toy bag. And I realized this year that one of them was Lincoln. So I ripped it off. (laughs) Because I'm not displaying Lincoln in my home. So, um, you'll take five ones. Don't give me any fives. <laughs> right. Exactly. And no pennies either. Yeah. Just throw the pennies back at the clerk. He's a tyrant. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. How was your week? Well, last week I, I dropped the, uh, a, uh, press release that I will not be running for Georgia's 14th congressional district. Uh, um, well, yeah. yeah, Tom Graves, uh, who has been our representative in Congress, has decided not to run for re-election. And since everybody else was putting out press releases, I decided to do my own. I love and uh, focus I on love, running. What's that? I love when people say a press release that they're not running. Like, obviously, yours was hilarious for a number of reasons, but like when people are asked by like two or three people suddenly they feel like they need to tell the world i'm gonna decline i'm too important to run for congress right now well that's yeah that's basically what i said is i'm uh I'm running dr cool and having too much fun with the wildly successful let me tell you why you're wrong podcast <laughs> and i want to give someone else a shot before <laughs> you know i claim the seat right right and plus uh I'm not dirty enough to run for Congress because, what is it, 174000 a year? Mm-hmm. And you have to maintain two households? There's, there's no way to be a... I say there's no way. It'd be very difficult to be a clean person and make 174000 a year maintaining a home in the district, which is very expensive, mm-hmm. and, and a home in Georgia. Well... Which... Go ahead. Which ultimately may have led into Tom's decision. Or he's running for Senate. You think? I don't know. I hope not. But I think you should have. I think you dropped the ball on one thing. I think you should have said in your, um, you know, announcement declining the, <laughs> the request to run. Um, I think you should have said that, you know, you don't want an open seat or just the, clear, the field cleared for you. You, you want to take it from someone. 
Uh, and there was a press release from Micah Grafley, who is the... Oh, I didn't see that because he has me blocked. But what does uh, it say? He is the vice chair in the in the Georgia House. Micah's a good dude. I, I like Micah. Uh, He's all right. But but he uh, he put a press release out because he was the first name that came up on everybody's lips. I, I mean, I was in a in a mixer, a, a leadership alumni mixer, uh, the day this broke, and uh, I was actually in a chamber uh, luncheon when it broke, sitting next to Matt Lowe. Um, when it broke and, uh, everybody immediately said Micah. And of course he's a Paulding County guy and I was in a Paulding County area. So that's probably leads to it. But he said, you know, you don't get a chance to see your kids grow up once. And I guess I can appreciate that. And that's true. I mean, you don't, if you, if you're in the, the Georgia house, you've got 40 days that you're supposed to be away. Not all the time, you know, commuting back and forth. And he also has the, I think, I'm assuming this, and I may be wrong, so please correct me, but doesn't he get to go home every night because he's close enough? Or does he stay in the city? I think that he and a couple other reps share a place for the late nights. Mm -hmm. Because the first first 15 days... They don't do anything. Then as they get close to, to uh, crossover day, they want to make sure they pass everything, you know, at two o'clock in the morning. Right. So those days, I think uh, uh, they have a crash pad to go to. But yeah, he's an hour away that he can get to. And of course, no one, I'm not accusing Mike of this. So no one can pull him over. He can drive as fast as he wants. Mm-hmm. I need one of those tags. I mean, they can pull him over and sight him. They just can't. Take him to jail. I thought they couldn't detain him at all. Well, they can because know. they don't know that, like, you might not, he might not be the one driving. Don't you remember the story we had last week? That's true. You know. That's true. Using common sense or whatever to assume. I mean, I've driven a car that had a state rep tag on it before. And I got pulled over doing it because I was driving backwards down a street on a one-way street trying to get out of an alleyway. You were only going one way. Right. I'm going to write rep on my <laughs> tag in Sharpie. <gasps> you should do that. Let's, let's, let's do our own license plate lawsuit. Let's get rep tags like SR181 since there's 180. <laughs> and then have them tell us we can't. <laughs> and then we'll sue. And then we'll sue. And then we'll sue. So, speaking of previous stories, we have an update from a story earlier this year, the city of Houston. Councilman facing recall, 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 decided to resign so they wouldn't get the satisfaction of removing him. This is yes. the guy who, this is the guy who in the middle of, we talked about this, what, was it the spring? I think so. The mayor said that the city wasn't ready for a black city clerk or a city administrator or someone in that position. And so then all this controversy comes and focuses on the city. They have standing room only meetings. It gets national media attention. The mayor doubles down and this city councilwoman basically backs her up by saying that he doesn't like interracial marriages either. So, by the way, we're not ready for black leadership. And also, I don't like when you guys have different birds and different nests. Yeah. And he or she even said, uh, I don't agree with the stuff on TV with all this interracial stuff. I'm like, that is an unforced error. Like, all racism, racism should be that easy to identify. I mean, good lord. I agree with that. Like, what even asked about it? Right. He just offered it up. Yeah. And so, he's facing a recall. It was supposed to take place in January. Which, I mean, props to the people, because getting a recall election scheduled and getting the petition, all that is not easy. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of... It's a lot of work. So, props to them. And now, after what, it just to, to ensure accuracy, we'll say at least six months, and after all of these headlines, 
in the petition and going before the courts and saying he wants to keep his seat and he doesn't want to be, re you know, he doesn't want to step down and he's not going to resign now that there's going to be a special election or a recall election. Uh, he's going to resign because he doesn't want to give them the satisfaction. I think, first of all, he's admitting, like, I'm about to get canned. And second, like, shame on you. Yeah, recalls are not that easy. Right. I mean, you have to demonstrate a, 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 either breaking a law or really, like, disregarding the office. I mean, you, you can't just, you can't recall somebody because they cheated on their wife. You can't recall somebody because you don't like laws they passed or ordinances they passed. Those recalls don't, don't stand up in the courts. So the fact that the recall is even moving forward to election lets you know it's bad. And well, it has to be directly related to a violation of the charter or to the ethical standards outlined in the charter, which is related to the oath that you took. And so they obviously, I mean, a lot of cities don't have them at all. Like Claxton doesn't have them, so they don't have anything to, it's really hard to have someone removed from office. But, and I, guilty as charged, I didn't look at theirs before because I, I just thought of this. But, um, you know, I'm assuming they have some sort of like moral turpitude and unbecoming behavior clause in their ethics you know if you, when you're not being a good representative of the city and his is easy to prove because i mean he made an official statement in meetings to the media over and over and over this wasn't like someone caught him in a locker room having a conversation and recorded it he did it in his official capacity you ever heard the the joke how do you know when someone's about to tell an, a racist joke and they look over both shoulders <laughs> No. He doesn't even have that common sense. Like, this person is so out there that they think they're in the... He, he thinks he's in the majority. Like... Right. We can't have these colored people here. I mean, am I right? And everybody else is like, no. 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 Ah, oh, my God. That's... Uh, yeah. So, good. The he's only gone. The only good thing that's coming out of this is that they did show their colors, and so now they're not going to be leaders. Because if, I mean, we all have biases against certain people, and we are shaped by our circumstances. So I'm not, I mean, I don't think everyone's inherently racist or anything, but we all have certain biases. But most of us are able to set aside our personal feelings and do our jobs and do them to the best of our ability. These people, specifically this man who is so forthright with all of it, has no business leading. And so that's the only thing that came out of this. Unfortunately, it probably destroyed and divided a community in the process. But at least he's not in charge of making decisions for other people's lives. Right. You'll never get rid of, rid of racism. But right. institutional racism is not tolerated in this country. And he, I can't even say he forgot that he was in charge. He just, he was in, was in such an echo chamber that... He thought that everybody else would be like, well, yeah, I mean, of course <coughs> that's wrong. Uh, uh, I did hear he's got a new job. Does he? Yeah, he's going to be teaching at Georgia Southern. <laughs> ha. Y you just ticked off like half the people on this show, but. Yeah, well, wait till we get to the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia City wishes, uh, wises up, I can't read, about being in the parade business. All right, this so, oh. Will you look at that? From the time that we talked about this story and having our outline, the story is gone from the internet. I'm getting a 404 error. But luckily, I can tell you about it because I wrote about it. Um, the city of Alpharetta has decided to um, basically cancel their old Soldier's Day parade because they're getting sued by the sons of the Confederate veterans. And the city has been... I mean, they've had this parade for over 70 years. Um, it's on the worst weekend of the year. It's the first August or the first weekend in August. It's always hot as can be. I had to walk in it a number of times for campaigns and it was always miserable, but um, it's huge. It's, it's massive. It gets bigger every year and it's a partnership between the city, 
and the American Legion. The city is an official sponsor of it, um, <clears throat> which I have always been opposed to. Last year, they spent $20,000 on this parade. Um, and they there was a huge scandal, if you will, I believe last year, 2018, because um, the Sons of the Confederate Veterans wanted to, as they always have, um, carry their stars and bars, and the city said no. You can't do that this year. And they're like, well, you're not the host. The American Legion's the host. And the city's like, actually, we are the host. We're, we're a co-host. You can't do it. So they filed a lawsuit against the city saying that they were um, not being treated fairly. And obviously, there wasn't enough time to settle it in court before the parade. So they got there several hours early and handed out little tiny Confederate flags and lined the streets with them um, in a little checkmate matter. But... Um, this year, they still did not allow the flags. They told them they could um, carry something different. And they're like, we won't be recognized that way. And all this back and forth. The courts have continued um, the case over and over. And it's probably not going to go to trial until the spring. And so just last week, um, the issue came before council. And the mayor was like, you know, we just need to get out of the parade business, which is 100% true. I mean, no matter what you think about the flag, to me, it's not about the flag. It's about the city um, sponsoring and forking over a large amount of money to pay for a private organization's parade. Um, are you are you funding all the other parades that happen? The homecoming parades, the Fourth of July parade, everything else? No, you're not. So anyway, that's that's the meat of it. But um, the city unanimously voted to stop funding the parade, and now there's not going to be a parade anymore because the American Legion says they can't fund it alone. Well, I mean, twenty grand to Alpha Tucky is—it's it, a large sum of money, but uh, it's not—it's not a lot. But you know, I agree; it's, it's not a good use of taxpayer funds. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything for the city. No, it doesn't do anything for the city. And you're right; twenty thousand dollars is nothing for the city of Alpharetta, but. If you're not going to give everyone else $20,000, if I want to go have a parade to march about how small government should actually be, and they're not going to give me $20,000, that's not fair. <laughs> the irony parade. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm not a big fan of parades anyway. They mess of up traffic. Not. Yeah, I know. They mess up traffic, <laughs> and I'm just generally a poo in life, I know. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of parades. Now, if, if, you win World War Two, fine. Uh, yeah, like there's there's a Christmas parade out here in Dallas that I don't go to because, well, they put a map up of places that you can park and then you have to work your way up to. Eh, screw that. Plus, I don't like being around that many people. You know, I don't. I'm not a big fan of crowds. But anyway, not about me. As far as the flag goes, the. The Sons of the Confederacy, or whoever they are, is right. You can't allow other organizations to display their banner or whatever and say, this is not allowed, if you're, if you're acting as a government organization. Now, if you're a private organization that puts on a parade, and you actually pay the city or the municipality to secure the streets and all that stuff, that's fine. As, you know, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade can tell you what you can what you can have what you can't but if if you're if you're a government sponsoring it's a first amendment issue right it's one of the many reasons that that uh private enterprise is always better than government amen so i'm happy that it um i'm happy that it is resolved i don't know what will happen though because they can still claim damages um, and, I guess, oppression from even if the city has can't like if they had gone ahead and rectified the situation, then the lawsuit would have to be dropped even if they were excluded for a year, I think. But the fact that they've just canceled it all together, I don't think that's going to settle it in the eyes of the courts. What do you think? If you're going to sue the city... I would think you'd have to sue the the parade, which would be, uh, which which would be suing the uh, the veterans also. 
I don't know if they're suing the veterans or not. How could you? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, I think they win. They made it go away. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know what damages they can show. Is there anybody that's uh, unaware that there was a confederacy that went would go to this uh, parade and go, oh my God, what's that flag? Let me Google it. Oh my God, we had a war with each other. I didn't know. Well, and I'm no, I mean, I don't, I don't have a Confederate flag flying outside of my home or anything, but I laughed my behind off because I remember when this all unfolded last year, and I mean, it was very hoity-toity about it, and the city officials were, you know just acting like they were, I don't even want to say what I'm thinking because my mom still lives there and is active in the city. So you're welcome, mom. But anyway, they, they just acted like they were doing this great service by keeping the flags out. So when they all showed up hours early and gave all the little flags out to the kids instead of the American flags and they handed out the Confederate flags, I mean, and so every picture, because they didn't want it displayed in the city parade. So all the pictures taken had the Confederate flag in it. And I just, I love when people get creative like that to show government. Thank you, Matt Lowe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's a brilliant troll. It, it really is. And even if they were excluded from the parade, you can't tell individuals what they can hand out to the crowd. I mean, unless it's like ecstasy or something like that. I mean, right. it's not like you're handing out acid going into the parade. Would be awesome if you drop this. Hurry, uh, hurry, take it now. But you, you want time yeah. to kick in? Yeah. <laughs> this is going to take thirty minutes. <laughs> uh, so it's not like even if they're excluded from the parade, they could, they could be out there on the parade route and make sure that any available. Press shot would have would have a, 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 a Confederate battle flag in it. Uh, <laughs> you, I have no idea listening. what she you're said. Just, yeah, you're, you're just laughing. <laughs> uh, we'll just move on. <laughs> just, One just... of the better stories of the year: woman who lost fence appeal gets last word with paint. This is my favorite story of the year. Talk about the ultimate troll. I mean, I laughed until I cried when I read it. I, I was laughing and crying telling Dave about it. I, I love this story. So this woman wanted to put up a privacy fence in her yard. She lived in the unincorporated area of Newton County. And so she called the county and asked what the rules were about it. And they have this, I guess they call it the Development Services Department. I guess that makes, you know, regulations and zoning seem less czar-like. So they told her something, and the department admittedly and has acknowledged that they told her wrong. And she put this fence up that was too tall, and it was six feet, I believe, and she was only allowed to have it at four feet. So her neighbor called and complained to the county. She had to go before and make her case. They told her she had to take it down. She appealed it, and she lost her appeal. And she was mad at her neighbor because all of her other neighbors said, you know what, we're okay with it. Like, we've signed this affidavit saying we don't mind her fence because it was just on one side, and it was a wood. I mean, it wasn't like some rickety chain link fence in this fancy neighborhood. It was, you know, a nice wood fence. So... She lost her appeal. So, and and it only had to be from the front half of the property line forward that, or from, you know, from her house forward that it had to be four feet. So the woman goes out on a ladder, first of all, and slices two feet off the fence with some sort of tool that leaves a completely jagged edge on the top of the fence to get it down to four feet. Then she like suspends herself over the fence. um, And after picking paint colors with the help of her neighbors proceeds to paint the neighbor's side of the fence, um, canary yellow. um, What were the colors? 
canary yellow, fuchsia pink, deep purple, salmon, and lime green. Like just this hideous, and her side of the fence is gray. Beautifully painted. I mean, still jagged on the top, but. And so, and she videoed the whole thing so she could prove that she never stepped on her neighbor's property. And she had the support of all the other neighbors in the, I guess, you know, little cul-de-sac and area going out of the cul-de-sac. And the the picture, we'll post it on the page, but the picture is just glorious. And I hope this woman gets an award. I mean, it's jagged and hideous. And her side is pretty. Yeah, she took a sawzall to it, would be, would be my guess, which is a, a uh, uh, just a handheld tool that is not a precise tool. I mean, we use it in my business because we're not very precise with stuff, <laughs> uh, with cutting holes and stuff, and just ran across it. And it is, you know, it's beautiful. I mean, the only thing I would have done is go F yourself written across it. But, of course, suspended and upside down, it's really hard to write go F yourself. And that might have gotten in trouble because, you know, this way. Cause, oh, because the other thing was um, she called back to the Development Services Department to ensure that there was no um, ordinance about paint colors. None at all. So they can't tell her it could be purple, green, yellow. So she picked all the colors and um, it's just amazing. Well, she really put a highlight on what's the problem with uh, zoning laws. It's your your neighbors telling you what you can do on your own land. Yes, I say that as a person who sits on the Board of Zoning Appeals, which I would have voted to approve this, this fence because I vote to approve everything. Uh, we actually had a meeting this week and had to uh, uh, approve a house being built within 20 feet of a property line instead of 30, uh, and the house was already built. Hmm. <laughs> like, what are you going to do if we, if we decline it? Destroy right. it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, I love this stuff. When so when H O you know HOA say you can't you can't do this this and this, someone goes and paints their their rooftop pink. Love it. Love it. I mean, I'm I'm the kind of guy that if you know the HOA or, or board says I can't do can't do something, I'll stand out my front yard every morning when people are driving to driving to work in a speedo, watering my lawn, and just wave at everybody going by. That so you want property values to go down? Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> it's a fat man in a speedo. <laughs> I'd have to put banana in there too, just just be impressive. Oh my! <laughs> anyway, no, but I, I love this... this woman. She, she really, she's in the running for story of the year on the show. She absolutely. I and I can't remember if it was this year or if it was last year, but in terms of like the most glorious um, property rights clapbacks, I guess you could ever. She's right up there with the guy who put the. Um, Statue of the Middle Finger to City Hall. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, that, I mean, it is it is beautiful in its intent. It is exactly the length that it has to be because one of the boards is cut like halfway through. She measured it exactly. I mean, it's it's a classy artsy way of telling your neighbor to go fornicate themselves i love it oh yeah i am mean, plus well, yeah a, absolutely you get the you get our seal of approval here at the let me tell you why you're wrong podcast speaking of these are our opinions and not necessarily those of all on georgia that's correct Turmoil on college camp I. Turning the tables on sexual harassment. A college professor tried to end a flirty email exchange with a professor, so she outed him and ended him. Uh, is camp I a word? It is if I say it is. Okay, I'm, I'll roll with it. I just was wondering if you knew something I didn't. No, I, I I just decided to roll with it. Okay, I'm good you, with that. You ever heard of the uh, uh, the Hawkeye Cockeye? Yes. The caucuses. Mm-hmm. 
So anyway, now that you're correcting my English, thank you very much, Jessica. <sighs> What started out as a fun little romance ended with a graduate student attempting to blackmail a professor into continuing their flirtatious banter in a sexual harassment investigation that treated the blackmailer as a victim and ultimately a one-year unpaid suspension for the professor. So, she was not his student. She was just a student at the school. Which I think totally changes the narrative, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. He, he holds no power over her. Yeah, and he, I mean, I don't know the context of their emails, but um, I also thought it was interesting that she, quote, outed him and ended him, and um, she's protected, but he's his name is everywhere. Right. And she's not a kid. She's a grad right. student. Right. I mean, she's not much older than you are. I mean, the youngest, I mean, the youngest would be 22, 24. Yeah. So this is not some 16 year old high school student with an infatuation with her, with her teacher. This is a grown ass woman. And she also chose not to just go to a, you know, the professor's superior or whatever. She also went public with everything. So, but wanted her name or her privacy protected, which I just think is, you're, you're consenting adults. You weren't pressured to do it. You weren't being, it's not sexual harassment. I'm sorry. It's not when you're. Mm. Not that it makes it right. But these are only text exchanges. He never laid a hand on her. Yeah. It doesn't, it, doesn't make him make it right if he's married or anything like that. I'm not. I'm not saying that's that an affair of the heart is is any. I'm not say any better, but he's still wrong. Does he lose your job? Wrong? No. I, I, is he national news headline name everywhere? Googleable? Googleable? No. Hell no. He's not even lose your job or get suspended for a year. I mean, that's when so one of your buddies pulls you aside and say, "Hey, man, it's a bad idea." Yeah, I'm pretty sure that any reprimanding he's getting from his wife is way worse than the rest of this anyway, but... I mean, if he keeps her. Right. Well, regardless, she's either going to take his ass to the bank or she's going to take his ass to the shed, but, you know... Yeah, she'll be I, the first one stomping for him to get reinstated so she can go and take half of that. <laughs> That's right. But I just think this is terribly worded, and I think that it's tilt... Or not terribly worded, terribly handled... And I think that it tilts too far in favor of the woman. I don't think she's a victim. It doesn't, it, to me, um, it's, it's clear on no matter where you read the story that it was retaliation for him trying to end the, let's just call it a relationship or the exchanges or whatever. So, um, okay. That indicates to me that if I slap you in the face, I'm guilty yeah. of assault. If you say, I'm going to tell people you slapped me in the face if uh, if you don't do whatever, that's a felony. So, no matter what you think of his conduct, the blackmail moves it to the next level. It, it, that's And shows that it was consensual. Of course. That she wanted, she wanted it to continue. She didn't blackmail him to say... Don't ever use my name. She so how him. is he in trouble? How is he in trouble if, if she's con and acknowledging that she was consenting to the exchanges and that she's blackmailing him and that he, and he was not her superior? How is he in trouble? Right. I mean, so there's this group called the Foundation for Individual Rights and in Education, FIRE. I'd never heard of them until this, but they're I'm assuming they're like, you know, the First Amendment Foundation for... Um, reporters and the groups that come in and advocate and he they're they've taken on his case and um they're pushing the school to to go back and undo what they've done the damage is done but he should at least be able to be you know resign from his job if he should so choose and go work somewhere else right he's not a good guy okay he made a poor decision 
and he made a poor decision for his family, and he made a poor decision for his life. But he's not a harasser. He's not an abuser. He's the, the, according to this story, he's he didn't perpetrate any offenses upon her. She is the perpetrator. She's the person that turned around and committed a felony. Black, she's blackmailing him. Mm-hmm. And I guess and she's she, getting away with it, and she's getting her privacy protected while she does it, which I hate. Absolutely. You know. So that's that's more good news because we always defend the worst people on earth. But yeah, she's 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 an awful human being. Or well, we're not she, defending her. Yeah, well, she's we're defending awful, his yeah, terribleness. Him. But. Well, yeah, but he. She didn't, she wasn't just snatched off the street and tied up and said, we're going to have a text relationship. This is something that happened between the both of them. And she's the one who felt jilted as a cyber lover, I guess. Um, Cyber mistress. Cyber mistress. Is that a thing? It is now. (laughs) It is now. (laughs) A Salagiism. Yep. (laughs) We got lots of terms from this show that we're going to make millions off of one day. I just know it. <laughs> we're we're going to copyright syllogisms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and charge so, everyone. Send an invoice to everyone who tries to use them. Perfect. And blackmail <laughs> them. <laughs> exactly. Heil Southern again. Last time it was for book burning. This time it's over campus free speech issues. Charles Robinson did a PowerPoint. Do what? I said they really dropped the ball here. They do that. Charles Robinson did a PowerPoint presentation on replacement theory on November 15th in his freshman English composition class. The theory is popular among white supremacist groups that uh, uh, failing white birth rates around the world will result in replacement and eventual extinction of white people by people of color. Robertson railed against the immigration policies of Western countries, which he said strategically populate European countries with non-white immigrants from developing countries to compensate for declining white birth rates. I mean, okay. Yeah. Last week, Georgia Southern University Administration sent out a campus-wide email outlining the university's comment, a commitment, comment, commitment to racial inclusion and equality, but it wasn't met, met with praise. I think well, of course qu- it wasn't because at colleges, that's where, you know, you're expected to be, you're expected and encouraged to be outraged about everything. Well, let me say something about this theory. My great grandmother sat my father down, and this is probably in the 40s or 50s. And she said that one day there won't be any white people, there won't be any black people that we'll all be brown because all of our races, all the human race will, will integrate and we'll all become one human race. And it wasn't meant to be fatalistic. It was just her saying this, you know, that's the, the natural sort of progression of things is that, that as societies merge together, they intermarry. And this was, you know, somebody... From again, my father was born in forty six, so that this would have been nineteen early nineteen fifties when when uh, uh, he still knew knew his grandmother. It's, it's interesting to hear that that theory now. So discussing that theory is not inherently racist. Uh, uh hold on, that should be the end of the conversation. Discussing a theory is not inherently racist. Like, 
did you have, I had public speaking classes. I had political classes. I was a political science major. We talked about all kinds of things. I had to listen to people's opinions and either sit there or debate them regardless, depending on the class. And nobody was calling for a national movement or for the university to throw them out just because someone opposed them. Right. And I'm not saying this guy's not a racist. I don't, I don't know Charles Robertson. Right. I, I don't, I don't know where it goes from there, but I've discussing a theory is not inherently racist. Even discussing Mein Kampf is not inherently uh, anti-Semitic. Discussing it is not. If you're discussing what led to the Holocaust, you discuss Mein Kampf and, and Hitler's theories that he that he put out there. Discussing it does not make you that person. And this this well, movement to shout down any to anybody that that openly discusses something is 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 well disgusting. Absolutely, and it just that's where we are right now. We're stuck in this place where we don't even have conversations about things that make us uncomfortable. We just get rid of them or say, you can't talk about that. And then, so when that thing, it makes you uncomfortable and you can't talk about it, you move on to the next thing because you're no longer talking about the last thing. And that just becomes this cycle. I mean, I don't use the term cancel culture because I just, I don't know. I just don't, I don't have a reason, but I, I don't use it, but it's, it's absolutely correct in its description in that we just cancel things out and pretend that it didn't happen or that we don't like it. And so therefore it doesn't exist. And that's not reality. Right. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to guess 70 years ago when communists and leftists moved into academia, they were the ones trying to be silenced. It was, they had to whisper about, about their views quietly because they were worried about being silenced and they fought against it. And these are the same people that are running the universities now. And you should be able to dis- discuss whatever and have dissension. And that's the the idea of going to college. Or the idea of of the academic experiences. You're not. You're no longer in high school. You're not being guided with with your thought. Is that let's expound upon thoughts. There's no one theory out there that is social theory. I should say that explains everything. Is you is you take a piece from here, a piece from there. Uh, uh, you can take a piece from Martin Luther King Jr. and a piece from Malcolm X and and and, and put together, take an a la carte version of the world and say, this is what he said that was right. This is what he said that was right. This is what she said that was right. And come together with, with your worldview. That's not being tolerated because these kids are not getting the opportunity to hear these other views. And there are things that I hear from from people that I completely oppose socially and politically that they'll say something and I'll say, I'll take that one little piece and say, that's something that I could bring into my worldview. That's correct. Whether it's, you know, um, social justice or, or whatever it is. And I can take it and I can reflect on it and say, okay, I, I take that part of their speech. I still don't support them as a whole, but that piece and there, these kids are being robbed of that por- portion of their education because it's, being stolen from them by these social justice warriors. Right. Not that I soapboxed that one. Well, and I feel like I hate to say all of them are doing it, but they, it's pretty common, but the, the universities and higher education as a whole are playing into it. They're, they're giving them everything they want you know, if, if you don't feel, if something doesn't make you feel good, the university is sorry, and they'll promise to be more inclusive. And that's not, that that's 
I don't want life to mimic the universities. I want people to be ready, leave a university ready for life. And we're going the opposite direction. No, absolutely we are. Look. And if, that's not exclusive to Georgia Southern. I, no, absolutely it's not. But if you're a hardcore anti-Trump person, but you like what he's doing with, with justice reform, that's okay. It doesn't make you a Trump supporter. Just to say, you know what? That's really, that's, that part of what he's doing is good. And we're getting to this point where we're so entrenched that we don't understand that as, that everybody thinks that, that gender is a spectrum, but, but your worldview is a spectrum. It's a, it's a little bit of this, little bit of that. None of us are going to agree on everything, but it's, it's the, the, the little pieces that we take from each other that enriches our lives. You know, grow, growing up and as a young man, I was like anti-gay marriage. It wasn't until that I, I got world experience that, that I said, you know what? One, it's nobody's business. Then I learned, you know, I started really becoming a Jeffersonian sort of Republican. And two, it's it's not it's not for the government to impose on anybody, but it took it took an evolution of my thought. It took open mindedness in that and getting to know people and understand different points of view and being willing to hear people that I totally oppose on ninety five percent of of their of their views, but we find common ground on that, and we're losing that in this country. And this is not a university thing. I think we're losing it in this country that we're losing the ability to find that that 5% that we have common ground and expound upon that and understand each other's point of views, even if we don't agree on everything. Well, people don't listen anymore. Like it's people, they, they literally cannot listen to an opposing view. They get up and leave, they boo, they, they call them names, they block them on Facebook. They don't just listen. And I've said many times or several times on the show, I've got lifelong friends, one of which is literally a lifelong friend. We were born within two weeks of each other with parents, with mothers who worked together. We grew up together. We ate dinners at each other's houses. Our mamas could spank us both who have blocked Mm -hmm. me on Facebook because he doesn't like my political views. That's sad. Um, It is. Another guy that I met when I was a preteen. That again, our families vacation together, and he, and he said something that was factually inaccurate about Trump. It's not that I, I care that he dis, disliked him, but he put something that was factually inaccurate, and I corrected on there, and he blocked me on Facebook. I'm still friends with his dad, but I can't see anything that he posts because he he literally blocked me on Facebook because he just he he couldn't he, he you know he he just what was willing to throw away. F- 40 years of knowing each other, or, well, in his case, probably 35 years of knowing each other, just because I didn't line up with his political views. Right. So, now that we've beat up uh, uh, the the uh, entire society, hmm. <laughs> Jessica, do you have any closing thoughts? I mean, I have lots of closing thoughts, but I'll keep it, I'll keep it narrow. Did you hear about the, um, the jogger that smacked the behind of the Savannah reporter Thanks on to live you. TV? Thanks to me. You said They're not sh- talking about it up there? No. No. Really? Not that, I'm, not that I'm paying attention to anyway. Well, yeah, I get that. But, so... If 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 you're if you've been living in a hole and you don't know what happened, a jogger was on a bridge doing a race that was being covered by a local TV station. He didn't know the the reporter, but as he ran by her, he uh, moved closer to her and smacked her behind on TV. And uh, yeah, it, she's has the support of like sexual assault advocacy groups and he's apologized and said that it was poor behavior. Um, people are harassing his family of threatening to blow up his church that he attends. Um, it's gotten way out of hand. And 
it's one of those things where what he did was obviously wrong. And I know that if it had been me that was reporting on live TV, like the people in my life probably would have been outraged as well. And, you know, the way that I would have handled it is I would have like put the guy up against a wall later on and told him what I thought. Like, that's just how I am, though. So, you know, everyone is different and I'm not saying she's handled it wrong, but it's kind of similar to the Georgia Southern thing in that. Okay, so she's upset, which she has every right to be, and she can say whatever she wants to about the situation. It happened to her. Um, But he has apologized, so she's let us know how she feels, and he's let us know that he's sorry, and we've talked about it. So my next question is, how long are we going to talk about it? Well, the first thing you said was he was aiming for her back. And... Well, that's still wrong. Ah, but it's not sexual. I agree with that, but he still that, shouldn't have. I mean, just don't touch people that you don't know. Well, well, that's true. I can't count how many asses I've smacked in my life. And most Whatever. of them belong to men. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not sexual. Uh, I had a good friend of mine riding with me. We swung by uh, Connie's bank. And she was, you know, leaning over the teller line, telling teller something. He walked up and smacked her on the ass. It wasn't sexual. It was just being funny. Uh, later, not that day, but his wife was leaning over the pool, handing him his phone. And I about Sparta kicked her into the pool on, on the ass. Uh, and the only reason I didn't is she was holding his $1,000 cell phone and <laughs> didn't, 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 didn't want to put it in the pool. It's not sexual. It's inappropriate for somebody you don't know. Uh, hell, when I see Matt Lowe tomorrow, maybe I'll probably smack him on the ass just just because we're doing the story. Well, which, and I, I which think, his is right but, on his shoulders. Uh, I it's, it's, I think the issue here though is that it's it's wrong. Okay, so we're all acknowledging that. Now what? Right. There's like, there's no reason to make this guy a pariah. Right. I, He's been humiliated. Let's. And I don't. I don't know. I don't. I I don't know the guy. I don't know his heart. I, I obviously don't know. If he said he was aiming aiming for her back as he was running by, I I don't know. Again, in a, I, I I'm not a big touchy person. Uh, I have become that. You know, being around business and stuff in the South, it's, everything's a hug. Um, mm-hmm. but like in my youth, I was not a big touchy person there i was a handshake you know fist bump sort of person um but i also have accidentally touched things on people i didn't mean to even watching there was a family feud episode i saw it on on youtube where a guy goes to hug steve harvey afterwards and he grabs steve's butt and he goes could you move your hand up a little bit because he, he wasn't aiming for steve's butt it just accidentally happened <laughs> Uh, I was giving a girl a hug uh, one day, and it was one of the, one of those where she was going for for the full hug, and I was moving to the side for the, for the side hug, and my hand ended up on a little bit of side boobage. It was I was embarrassed. She thought it was funny. I was hum- I was humiliated. Like I, I'm like I wasn't aiming for that, and you're just right. like yeah yeah I know. But that that kind of stuff happens. I think it's kind of I think it's a sad state that this guy's going to be made a social pariah for however long till the news cycle changes, because because of that. I mean, and 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 you know when you go past a famous per when you interact with a famous person, you want to touch them. Well, and again, like I just I don't this this thing where what do you want from him? Right, yeah. What what is she going to gain by that? Is and I don't. I think people want to touch famous people, and and that and going by the reporter, and and touching uh, touching on the back as he's going by, he has a sort of connection with with celebrity. I man, I I hope that he wasn't swinging for an ass cheek. I really do because that just. Although, you know, when we actually are in the same room, how you're going to be greeted now. I will sue you. (laughs) 
especially now that it's premeditated and, and on tape. Right. Right. <laughs> well, you know. Cut that, Eric. You, you wouldn't we're, we're need to. We're going to be rich and we're going to retire. Yeah. You wouldn't need to sue me. <laughs> the ass beating wouldn't come from you. Connie. There'd be two of you beating my ass. <laughs> I'll just call her and let her handle the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, please no. In fact, if she listened to this podcast, no, please which, take me to jail. Please take me to yeah, jail. I'll be safe in there. <laughs> That's funny. So I got a couple closing thoughts. One is we've got uh, four reps, but but three that I that I follow in Paulding County. One's Micah Grafley. One is Martin Mumptahan. Is one is uh, Joseph Gullet. So on the pictures on one given day, I'm seeing. Mike, Mike is nice new house that he got. Joseph is redoing his, uh, his basement. And he's got a picture of his beautiful new baby, uh, and, uh, his wife and his, his other, other child in front of a fireplace. And Joseph's got a picture of his dog chewing the tail, the t- table leg. I'm like, that is so perfect for my district. That is so deliciously redneck. <laughs> he's got a picture of his dog chewing the table dog named Ruger. He's such a perfect fit for my district. And the other is last week, Trump did a a, a, a executive order against anti-Semitism, which I guess that's double negative, so it's pro-Semitism. Anyway, I didn't know these existed, but there are Trump Keep America Great yarmulkes. And I'm going to mm. buy one and I'm going to start wearing it everywhere and not explain myself. I'm just going to start showing up to stuff with a red Keep America Great yarmulke. Is that legit? I mean... Yeah. Oh, there are all sorts of uh, of, of yarmulkes that you can, you can wear. I actually Googled it and there's one with a star of David in the middle and says Trump 2020. Uh, but yeah, there's all sort. I mean, there's New York Yankees yarmulkes. There's, uh, uh, you know, sports teams. You've got whatever. As long as you're wearing the yarmulke, I mean, you're obviously cover covering your head to God. Uh, so that satisfies the requirement. So I'm going to buy one of these things, and I've got to figure out how to keep it on my head. I think it's either like uh, uh, barrettes or something that you used. I'm going to start wearing it to all the functions I go to, just not explain myself. Oh. Well, well best of luck with that, first of all. <laughs> and second of all, I mean, I mean, every, yeah, everyone can do their own thing, but that's just weird to have a, a your religious... Hmm. I didn't know that, that that was a thing, but... Okay. No, I agree. I agree. It's a it's little out of... Look, if you want to wear whatever yarmulke you wear in a Trump pen or Trump shirt or whatever, but to merge the two, I think is, yeah, is, is a little weird and all that stuff, which is so, that that's what attracted me to trolling that, is it's so sort of out of whack to have this, to have a religious symbol uh, uh, embroidered with a political message that I just, it, it just cracked me up because I, I was actually watching, it was on TV, but it was on mute. Just as I'm sitting there doing paperwork and stuff, and I look up, I'm like, it's a 13-year-old kid standing up at Trump's podium. I say 13, he looked 13. He looked like he was giving his bar mitzvah address because he, he, I mean, he looked that young. Uh, and he's wearing a Trump yarmulke with Trump smiling next to him. I'm like, good Lord, man. I mean, not the kid, but Trump putting that image out there as a, I mean, if, if you, you don't think that press conferences are, are uh, part of a, a political speech or, or uh, campaigns, there you go. So, if you like what you heard, or you don't, go ahead and rate us the maximum amount of stars on whatever pro- platform you use to listen to us. And uh, uh, be sure to share us on Facebook. And, well, if, if we're on Twitter, I don't know. I don't think we do enough on the tweets to, to spread anything but but tell your your friends and inflict them or inflict to us upon anything. them yes spread us like a virus for jessica Salaji, i'm dave roberts have a great week 